Hey everyone, this is James from mkiaudio.tk, back with the third part of this video series I'm calling Home Studio Basics. And in this part, I want to look a little at microphones. So, what are the different types of microphones? Well, we have dynamic, condenser microphones, and ribbon microphones. There are others available, and there are even different types within these three main categories. But today, we're just going to look at these three basic ones that you'll be using in your studio. So the first one we're looking at are dynamic microphones. I'm sure plenty of you will recognize this one. It's the, the trusty old Shure SM58. Uh, so dynamic microphones, uh, the sound is produced with a magnet and a coil. Uh, when the sound enters the windscreen of the microphone, the sound waves move the diaphragm, which moves the coil. When the coil moves within the magnetic field, a varying electrical current is generated and this is what's turned into your audio signal. So the advantages of a dynamic microphone are they can handle high input volumes, uh, they are incredibly tough microphones, hence the stories of people using these uh, SM58s for hammering in nails and then sticking them up on stage and they're still working perfect. And also then generally have a very narrow pickup pattern so that's why they're preferred for live use. Um, the disadvantages of them are they generate a very weak signal, so they generally need uh, quite high uh, gain on the preamp to get a decent sound out of them. Um, they can also have a limited frequency response, just depending on what microphone you're using. So the second type is condenser microphones, uh, and this is the Behringer B2 Pro. Um, the condenser microphones work by capturing sound using a capsule made up of two plates. Uh, one plate is charged and the other isn't. Uh, the plates are placed inside the microphone extremely close together, so when the sound enters the capsule, um, it moves the uncharged plate, which contacts the charged plate, creating an electrical signal. Um, so, like I mentioned, one of the plates is charged, so this microphone requires uh, power, and this is usually supplied from your uh, preamp or audio interface, and it's known as uh, plus 48 volts phantom power. Uh, advantages of a condenser microphone are they have a high frequency response, um, they can give a very clear signal, and this is why they're very common in studio use. Uh, they're available in various pickup patterns. Uh, the B2 Pro has uh, cardioid, uh, figure eight, and omni. Uh, so you can choose which pattern you want to record with. Um, they can also pick up very low signals as well. So, um, like I say, they're a lot more sensitive than what a dynamic microphone would be. Uh, the disadvantages of this. Uh, or these condenser microphones are that they require phantom power from your preamp or audio interface. Now, in this day and age, this generally isn't a problem. Most interfaces and preamps have phantom power built in. However, if you're working off an older system, you may have to buy a separate unit to provide the phantom power to the microphone. Um, they can't handle very high input volumes. Now, uh, the B2 Pro has a built-in pad uh, which drops the signal down by 10 dB. Um, so say this stops any distortion creeping in to the signal or noise. And the capsules inside them can be very sensitive to damage. So say there's a few disadvantages to them, but overall they're a far clearer microphone than what a uh, dynamic would be. And the last one would be ribbon microphones. So these work in a similar way to dynamic micro microphones. Uh, they use a thin corrugated metal ribbon which is stretched across the windscreen of the mic uh, within a magnetic field. So when sound enters through the windscreen of the mic, the ribbon vibrates uh, within the magnetic field, creating an electrical current. So say this is similar to the dynamic microphones. Um, you get a couple of different types of ribbons. You get passive ribbons or you can have them with a built-in uh, preamp which requires a power supply. So the advantages of uh, ribbon microphones are they can handle extremely loud input volumes. So they're great for the likes of guitar cabinets and stuff. You'll often see them on there. Uh, they have a very natural EQ response and they have a very smooth frequency response. 
Um, some of the disadvantages are they do not work with the phantom power, so they require a separate power supply. Um, some of the older ribbon microphones, uh, phantom power can actually damage them. Um, but the newer ones they're bringing out now, they're building in features that um, stop phantom power causing any damage to the circuitry inside them. Uh, ribbons can be extremely expensive, um, sort of anywhere up to a few thousand pounds for them now, and they have a limited polar pattern pickup. But let's say they have their uses. Let's say they're quite good for guitar cabinets now, and, and uh, anything that's going to be producing a, a loud uh, output volume. So my recommendations uh, for your first recording mic. Uh, if you haven't any mic at all and you're looking for your first one, I would recommend going for a large diaphragm condenser microphone. So, like I mentioned before, the Behringer B2 Pro, uh, they're great for vocals and instruments. They have multiple polar patterns, so you have a few options there, and you have great value for money. Usually, these large diaphragm condensers, you can get a quite decent microphone for around £100, so you're not having to spend an absolute fortune on a microphone that generally small home studios can't afford. Uh, if you're looking to add a mic to your mic locker, so you've already got your big, uh, your large diaphragm studio condenser and you're looking for something slightly different, well, you can't go far wrong with the Shure SM57. Now, the 57 is similar to the SM58. Uh, it doesn't have the built-in windshield and stuff, but it still has the same uh, workings on the inside of it. So they're great for recording use on drums. Uh, some people's vocals sound very good through these, um, but they're also great for live performance as well. They're an extremely tough microphone. Um, like I said, they can be used to record almost anything. So that would give you a little bit of variation. And instead of going for another uh, large diaphragm condenser, uh, you can try a dynamic mic then, and that gives you a couple of options whenever it comes to recording. So thanks for watching again. You can uh, visit the blog at www.mkaudio.tk. Um, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash mkaudio. Uh, follow us on Twitter at mkaudio. We also have the podcast up at www.mkaudio.tk. Sorry www.mkaudiopodcast.tk You can go to the blog, you'll find it there too. Um, as usual, rate, comment and subscribe. Um, in the next video, we're going to be looking a little bit at studio monitors. So, like I said, this is James from mkaudio.tk. Thanks for watching.